at least a very general sense. I'm not going to give you the crux of it just yet, but just a general sense. And Locke's essays concerning human understanding, um, Locke, and like I said in the beginning, in the first series, I'm going to be looking at Locke, um, Saussure, and Lacan. I've intentionally omitted um, Peirce from the analysis, not because I dislike Peirce, but I, it, it, you know, this video series is going to be very, very long. It's extremely, you know, it was. It took me like two weeks to compile the notes. It's taken me several days to uh, to shoot the videos, um, and just adding Peirce will just it'd be too much. So what I'm probably going to do is maybe some point in the future do like a part two of uh, semiology and uh, semiotics and just look at Peirce's account. But right now I can't. So to strengthen this this account, right? Um, in so sir, I I found a passage in Locke because what I want to do is I want I want to show you that so sir is contextualizing his analysis within the history of ideas. He's not, you know, he didn't just pull this out of, out of nowhere. So in Locke's uh, Essays Concerning Human Understanding, Book 3, Section 2.7, Chapter 2.7, uh, Locke says the following, quote, and it's a, it's a long quote, quote, but so far as words are of use and signification, so far as there is, so far, uh, so far is there a constant connection, a constant connection between the sound and the idea, right? So that's important, right? This obviously Locke's account predates um, Saussure's account, but I'll read this bit again. But so far as words are the uh, so far as words are of use and signification, so far is there a connect a constant connection between the sound and the idea. So what we need to do, right? What we need to do is we need to ask ourselves the following question, right? We need to ask ourselves, and I'll answer this later, but right now I'm just going to introduce the question. Question. What is the... What is the connection, B slashes between, between the, as Locke says, the, how does Locke phrase it? The sound, S-O-U-N-D, and the... What is the connection between the sound and the idea, right? What is the connection between the sound, zapatos, and my understanding of shoe? What is the connection between the sound, shoe, as a sound, as a waveform, and my idea of shoe? When I say shoe, you have an idea in your head, right? When I say zapatos, if you speak Spanish, then you have an idea in your head. The idea that you have in your head, zapatos, and the idea that I have in my head, shoe, is in a sense the same, right? So the question is, and, and Locke already raised this, right? Um, the relationship between the sound and the idea. This is going to prove later, not now, but later to be a very, very salient point. This is a very, this is sort of a foundational point. And what I wanted to do in constructing the lecture is I wanted to present the, the information, it wasn't easy to construct it, but I wanted to present the information as it sort of unfolded historically, right? Um, because Saussure got his ideas from, from previous scholars, which, requires, which required me to find that point in the scholar, in Locke, to show you that, listen, here's how within the history of, the history of ideas, this, uh, this conception of semiology, this conception of semiotics unfolded. And so now I'm going to read the whole quote from Locke without sort of interruption. But so far as words are of use and signification, so far is there a constant connection between the sound and the idea, very important, and a designation that the one stands for the other, and I'll come back to that, that the one stands for the other, without which application of them, they are nothing but so much insignificant noise. Okay, now, um... We recognize that the one stands for the other, that, so that there has to be some type of relationship, right? And we need to, um, in creating, and not we, but Sosora needs to, I'm sort of play, pretending like we're Sosora, we're thinking like Sosora. Um, so as, as uh, Sosora is, we have to think how he thought, to sort of really understand what he's saying. At this point in his analysis, what he's thinking is, okay, Locke did this account, Locke, he didn't say, say any of this in, 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 uh, in uh, the Course in General Linguistics. This is my take, right? Um, 
So I know that Locke made a connection between the sound and the idea. I need to figure out what that connection is. But also, as Locke said, um, without this relationship between the sound and the idea as sort of the, 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 the grounding of my understanding, because what Locke was concerned with, with was epistemology, he wasn't concerned, I mean, semiology didn't exist, he was an epistemologist, so he was concerned with how we think. Without this connection between, this necessary connection between the sound pattern, oh, sorry, sorry, the, the sound and the idea, don't want to give too much away, between the sound and the idea, then you can't talk about thought. So, um, Locke then says, they are nothing but so much insignificant noise. Without this connection, it's what the parrot's doing. And I said this in the previous video, right? In the previous video, the parrot sees the red ball, and insofar as he sees the red ball, you, you show the, the parrot the red ball, I've taught my parrot to say, that is a red ball. He sees the red ball, he really hasn't connected the sound, that is a red ball, to the idea that that is a red ball. All he's doing without this connection, and that's what Locke means in this, without which application of them, they are nothing but so much insignificant noise. What in the world does that mean? What that means is without the, the necessary connection between the sound and the idea, all the parrot is doing is parroting, right? He, the, the parrot is just saying, it's just saying, that is a red ball. It's mimicking the wave, the wavelength, the wave frequency or whatever, the tonal pitch, blah, blah, blah. But there's no meaning there. So that's what Locke is saying. And that's a very, for me, I mean, that's the foundation right there, right? So uh, it's, it was important for me to, to find that in essays concerning human understanding and present it to you with the references and stuff because, uh, first of all, it's just good pedagogy. Second of all, as a, a lot of grad, graduate students um, uh, watch these videos, and it's important that you understand sort of, the, again, the, the history of ideas, not just the concept, but historically where were those ideas situated, because what um, Saussure has done is he situated himself historically at the tail end of sort of um, sort of um, new developments after neo-grammarians, and he looks back and he, he's sort of selecting the stuff that he likes and, 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 and solidifying this to create this idea, and this is how he does it. He recognizes that, look, what I do when I say that is a red ball is different from what the parrot does when it says that is a red ball because, as Locke says, there has to be this necessary connection between the wave frequency, the sound, and the, uh, the idea. Um, with that, uh, just one little quick point. Um, in my analysis of Saussure, I skip past all of the physiological stuff. I'm not really interested in the physiological stuff because I'm not a communication theorist. I'm a philosopher, so I, I'm more interested in thought. But he, does, he has a huge discourse on the physiology, the physical constructs of our body, and there's lots of interesting questions that can be asked because of that, and he goes through a very interesting discussion, none of which I'm going to discuss in this video series because it doesn't directly pertain to what I'm doing. Again, what's, what's motivating my analysis is this discourse on meaning. Okay, so the next thing uh, that we, so that covers that. Um, language is the data. And what we need to be asking ourselves, what you need to be asking yourselves, what you need to recognize is the question is, remember I said I'm going to bring us in slowly, what is the connection between the sound and the idea? That's what's now going to govern, uh, govern our analysis. So let's find out a little bit more. Okay. All right, language is the uh, concern of, of everyone. And what Sir is attempting to do is he's attempting to make uh, linguistic analysis more accessible, right? He's attempting to make linguistic analysis more uh, accessible. And um, that ends this this section of 1.2. Um, I hope that that was informative. What I'll do is continue the analysis with 1.2.2. Uh, um, I wanted to make a separation at this point because the concept, we shift conceptually and I didn't want to have that all in the same series. So uh, with that being said, I'll see you for the next installment. Thank you for watching my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.